Another special part of our day today is the installation of a new pastor. Uh, Elder, pastor, overseer, shepherd, four titles for the same office. Uh, There is a plurality of, of godly men that lead and govern and pray for and shepherd and care for this church. And so I'm going to ask Scott Demarest to introduce for us someone that is not new to Grace Bible Church, uh, but whom we are installing today as an elder. Thanks, Scott. My way past the swimming pool, and we're ready to do this. Um, If you have your Bibles, would you please turn with me to 1 Timothy? We're going to be looking at chapter 3. I want us to put our eyes on verses 14 and 15 together. The situation here is Paul is writing to Timothy and he's giving him instructions on how it is that one should conduct themselves in the church. Chapter one, Paul makes his way through an introduction into the letter and he spends five chapters, chapters two through chapter six, explaining how a church should conduct itself. In verse three, uh, chapter 3, in verse 14, Paul writes this. I'm writing these things to you, hoping to come to you soon. But in case I am delayed, I write so that you will know how one ought to conduct himself in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the support of the truth. Let's look at three things in verse 15 that are stated about the church. First of all, it's the household of God. It is the gathering together of redeemed sinners who live out their lives as Christians in relationship to one another. That's what the church is. It's the household of God. But he also mentions that it's the church of the living God. It's a group of believers who have come together in relationship with one another to worship a God who is alive. That's what separates biblical Christianity from every other belief system. The one they worship is alive. And then notice that the church is the pillar and the support of the truth. This is God's design for the advancement of the gospel throughout the world. The church is at the center of this. When you read your Bibles, you're reading through your New Testament, you get to the end of the gospels, there's no church. When you get to the beginning of Revelation, there's a church. God's design for the expansion of the gospel involves people gathering together in a local church being taught, being trained, being equipped, and taking what that training is in their heart to the world around them. The church is the pillar and the support of the truth. All of the people in the church are that pillar. We are the support of the truth. It's the institution that God has chosen to put on display his work in reconciling sinners to himself. If the world around us here could see us this morning, they could see what God has done in our lives. We're going to be testifying to that here in just a few more minutes. So we feel the weight of this. We feel the weight of what it means to be a church and what it is to be a church. Notice that uh, God doesn't leave us. Paul doesn't leave us wondering how it is we should do this. He says at the very beginning, I'm writing to this to explain to you how you conduct yourself. So God doesn't just give us this weighty entity, this weighty organism called the church. He tells us how to function in a church. In chapter three, at the center of all of this is leadership. You have the qualifications for the elder in the first part of the chapter. Then he moves into qualifications for those who are involved in deacon service. It's an entire chapter that's devoted to leadership. If you move to 2 Timothy chapter 2, just advance a few pages in your Bible. Look at chapter 2, verse 2. Many of us know this verse. This is very helpful. What you see here are four generations of leadership that are mentioned. Paul says... The things you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, you entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So you have Paul training Timothy. Timothy heard from Paul. You have Timothy entrusting these things, those same things to to faithful men. And then you have those faithful men entrusting others beyond that. So generation after generation, you have the idea and the design that the church is training the church, training leadership in the church. And we want to follow that pattern here at Grace Bible Church. We, we follow that, and we're very, very thankful to have followed that pattern with Ben James. Uh, it's been a blessing to have known Ben for, for many, many years since Ben has been here. 
Uh, ben was pretty well equipped when he got here, but he has only added to that equipping since he has gotten here. And the, the primary way that Ben has done that is by reading his Bible and by praying and, and taking care of his own heart very, very well. And he's equipped himself beyond that in, in a training, formal training here at this church. And it's been a blessing to watch that and see that as well. But Ben has put that equipping to good use. First in his own home, he leads a good marriage. He leads a good home. His home is a well-ordered home. His family is behind him. He's also put that equipping to good use in this church. He's served in many places, in many arenas for, for a long time. So we began an internship process with Ben more than two years ago. We put an application in his hand. He filled out that application and every one of the sitting elders sat with Ben. I sat with Ben and it was February of 22 when I sat with him. It was a great conversation. I was really encouraged by our time together. He had interviews with all of us and, and everybody came away very encouraged. So we entered into an internship process with Ben that was designed for us to be able to evaluate how Ben does serving alongside us as an intern. And Ben served alongside us for a long time. Uh, he attended our meetings. He contributed to the meetings as one who was an elder intern, which means he wasn't an elder, but he was contributing. He was offering his thoughts and his observations. He would pray with us and discuss with us. Uh, we spent a lot of time with Ben. And uh, our conclusion after all of that was that, that Ben has met the elder qualifications, that he is a fit man to serve as an elder at this church. And we're very, very, very thankful for that. We also know that Ben is in a season of his life where his life can accommodate this. Uh, serving as a pastor or an elder at a church is one of the most demanding things that, that a man can ever undertake. And Ben is ready to do that. And he has proven over his time and his relationship with us that, that he is ready for this and he is ready to function well alongside of us. Uh, he has proven himself to be a well-qualified man for elder service here at this church. And so today we are, are very comfortable. If you notice your bulletin, uh, it's got a list of all the elders. There's seven of us who are elders and, and Ben's name is there alongside of us. And he's listed as an elder intern. And today we are ready to remove that internship designation from Ben and, and commission him as an elder here at Grace Bible Church. And, and that is an occasion for great joy. Um, it is an occasion that we've been looking forward to for a long time. I can tell you I've enjoyed serving with Ben in the time that he's been here with us. And, and Ben has proven himself to be one of the most temperate men that I know. Um, ben has been a man who displays a great deal of temperance in discussions across a wide range of topics. And, and we're very eager to do this. Uh, ben has proven himself and we are ready to do this. Um, we had a period that started in the beginning of March where we opened up uh, Ben to, for us. We wanted to hear observations from you. We wanted to hear your input of Ben, recognizing that some of you may have known Ben in ways that, that we didn't. We wanted to hear your thoughts and your observations on Ben. Uh, that period of time has come to a close. There were some observations that were brought to us. They were brought to Ben. And I think I can say with, with confidence that all of those conversations took place in a very godly way. And everything that was raised was resolved. And we are ready to move forward with Ben. Uh, before I call up Ben to and the rest of the elders for me to pray over him, I want to just share with you a little bit about the office of elder, if you haven't been around here for too long, I want to point out a few things about our model of leadership here. Uh, you'll notice the names of all the men that are on your bulletin there. Uh, the first thing I want to share with you about uh, the, the role of elder here is that it is not a termed service. It is not a, a role that we're appointing to Ben for a period of time. This is a, a permanent appointment for Ben. Um, and it's a permanent appointment with some conditions, and, and one of which relates to season of life. If the Lord brings a season of life into Ben's life in such a way that it really doesn't make sense for him to continue serving as, as an elder at this church, then we would honor that. There is a, a right and there is a good way. There is a very honorable way for a man to step down from this church. And we want to make sure that we recognize that in a leadership role here at this church. Um, we want to make sure we also communicate that this is a lifetime appointment as long as the man remains qualified. And you read through the qualifications are in four places in your Bible. Primarily, you'll see them in 1 Timothy chapter 3, and you'll see them in Titus chapter 1. But you'll also see them at the end of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and in the beginning of 1 Peter 5. And so as long as the man is living in that role and he's fit to be an elder and he's maintaining the qualifications, he's going to serve here as an elder at this church. And what that does is that gives a man continuity across time. You get to know him, he gets to know you, and he gets to be better and better and better grounded in this church and able to serve better. Uh, when Ben becomes an elder at this church, he is going to serve with an equal voice with the rest of us on the elder board. Uh, that means that Ben is not on the junior varsity. Uh, when Ben has uh, observations, he has contributions to make, they're going to carry the same weight 
as any of the rest of us. And uh, Ben has already proven that he's ready to do that. He's, he's well-informed, he's well-prepared when he enters meetings, and it's been a blessing to uh, have him contribute to us in that way. But we want you to know that Ben will have an equal voice with the rest of us, and that Ben will work hard with the rest of us to reach unanimity on, on agreements and, and issues that are before us. On anything of any substance here at this church, what we want to do is we want to have the elders uh, come to an agreement, and that means that it takes us a little bit of time sometimes to get to agreement on an issue. But the reason why we do that here at this church is because we want to have a united answer for you so that whenever you come to any one of us with a question on something of any substance here at this church, it doesn't matter who you talk to, you're going to get pretty much the same answer. Maybe it's going to be colored and flavored from our own perspective, but you're going to get the same thing. So we don't have any votes here on the elder board and where something is decided with a a four to three vote or anything. We we work until we have unity so we can serve you as one unified leader, a group of men. Uh, What I want to do is read to you a few verses from Acts chapter 20, just so that you feel the weight of what it is that Ben is moving into. So if you would turn in your Bibles to Acts 20, I'm going to read verses 28 through 32. The context here is that Paul is speaking with church leadership. He's speaking with the leadership of the church in Ephesus, and he's uh, reminding them of what is going to take place within their own church and within their own leadership. I'm reading this so that uh, you would be faithful to pray for us because we need your help. We need your help with things that arrive to us from within the church and things that come to us from outside of the church. Uh, Paul is speaking again to the elders at the church in Ephesus. He's outside of Ephesus, and he says to them, Be on guard for yourselves and for all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves, men will arise speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after them. Those are some of the most sobering words in the New Testament that you can read. Therefore, be watchful, remembering that night and day for a period of three years, I did not cease to admonish each one with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all of those who have been sanctified. That's what it's in front of us. That's what in front of Ben as we bring Ben before you today. So I'd invite Ben and his wife, Melissa and Emma to come up and the rest of the elders who are here, please come up and gather around Ben while I pray for him. And then we'll move on with our service. Let me pray. Let's go to prayer together. Father in heaven, you are a good God. Your design for the church is a good design. Lord, I thank you that you have seen fit to bring Ben to us. In your sovereign providence, you have brought him here to us at this church. And I praise you, Lord, for the years and years and years and years of service that Ben has rendered to this church. Service that has come from a clean heart service that has come from a man who humbly walks underneath you. Lord, I thank you for the particular gifting and equipping that you have given to Ben, that he's put on display quietly, silently, but with excellence. And he serves us in many, many ways. And I thank you for that. Lord, I thank you that uh, he works in ways that are for the good of this church, that enable us as a church to carry the gospel out well. Lord, I thank you for the, the years that he spent overseeing things in Next Generation Ministries at this church, providing guidance and encouragement to many, many of those who taught our children. And Lord, the fruit that came out of that. And in many other areas, Lord, you've used him. I thank you, Lord, that you have seen fit to bring him before us and to give us the opportunity to evaluate him. I thank you for your grace to him, Lord God, to sustain him in his home and in his marriage with his daughters as well. Lord, I pray that you would grant him grace to continue to do that, to lead his home well. I pray that you would grant him grace to continue to serve alongside of us. Lord God, as he enters into this new season, I pray that you would grant him the grace that he needs to function alongside of us in the same way that you have to this point. Oh God, grant him your grace. Grant him an urgency to guard his own heart, to look carefully into your word as to how he can continue to care for his own heart. Lord, I pray for us as a church that that we would serve alongside of him. We would worship alongside of him as a church that, that sees him and recognizes him and loves being in fellowship with him. 
Lord, I'm thankful that, that Ben is my elder and he's my pastor. I'm thankful that I have a chance to elder him and pastor him. God, I pray that you would bless all of these relationships, that you would be at work through this appointment, and I pray it in Christ's name. Amen.